Welcome everyone to another video by Cheeky Games. Uh, in this video I will discuss the gameplay of Vampire the Masquerade Heritage, the board game. Uh, before I get into that I want to do a little bit of an intro. Uh, if you are not interested in the intro, there is a timestamp down below that will take you straight to the gameplay. So I want to talk about a couple of things in this intro. One of them is the flavor of the game. It is amazing, so it would be a miss if I would miss out on that. So Vampire the Masquerade is a role-playing game originally that I played as a teen and I actually still play now. Um, and this game is based upon that. And in Vampire the Masquerade the world's a darker version of our world and there's vampires there. There's more supernatural beings but it focuses on the vampires. And vampires manipulate each other, manipulate the world and they all have their wants and needs. And they are divided into several clans and every clan has its wants, needs, strengths, weaknesses. So it's a game of politics, it's a game of compromise, you get a little bit here but you have to give a little bit back there. It's a game of backstabbing each other. It's a game of the shadows, vampires don't want to be seen. So uh, that comes back into this board game, so that's really nicely done. Um, you can see a little bit of the art that they, they've added and it's quite beautiful, so I've displayed two here as well. So that's a bit about the flavor I wanted to talk about. Uh, I will make sure to uh, not mention any spoilers to the Chronicle game, that's what they call the legacy version. I'll use those two interchangeable, sometimes legacy, sometimes chronicle. So this is a basic non-chronicle or legacy game so that you will not be spoiled in any way. Uh, I hate spoilers, I'm guessing you do too. Um, but I will make several videos. This one will be about the basic game. I will make one about the clan so that you have a little bit of an idea of what each clan does and um, how that works. A little bit about the flavor of every clan maybe. And I will talk about the battlegrounds, uh, they're uh, like in the uh, role playing game, you fight over several things, you have three battlegrounds, uh, but there are nine to choose from. I've started with the basic ones for this video, um, but there are more, I will discuss all of them in a separate video. And I will do a video for the Legacy Chronicle uh, part, so that you also have a look into what that looks like, and I will use... Uh, everything from the very beginning of the Chronicle, so there will be a slight bit of spoiling there, but that's also what you will get when you do your first setup, so it should not be uh, too invasive um, at all. So, that's the intro, let's get into it. So, uh, I've already set up the game, this is a two-player game, it actually goes up to four, but I've decided to use a two-player game, it's easier to explain with. So this is uh, Anatole from the uh, Malkavians, this is Mr. Svanchon of the Tremere. Uh, you can recognize the Tremere by their clan symbol and the same goes for the Malkavians. Uh, they have their clan symbol. Uh, it'll be used in several places to indicate which player uh, is uh, in charge of that token. So um, the setup, you start with a queue of mortals that you can pick from. You start with some uh, basic missions and you start with battlegrounds that you've also set up in a, in a specific way. A character starts with three clan boon tokens and three power and three cards in hand which are noted on the clan leader and some cards not in hand that you can still draw. The same goes here for Anatolia obviously. I randomly determined that Mr. Svanchon would be the starting player by uh, giving her this uh, marker and we'll talk about what happens with that later. Um, what is the goal? The goal of the game is to get as much victory points as possible. So there are three ways to get victory points. So I'm going to discuss them shortly here and I will get into detail uh, later when we discuss them uh, specifically. So every power, which are the red gems, is worth a victory point when it is on a vampire. Every boon is also worth a victory point when it is on one of your vampires. Then there is the yellow gems, which are infamy, and infamy is minus one victory point. So over here you have the big gems, which are exactly the same as the little gems, except three times the worth. So this is three power, this is three infamy. That's one way. The second way is by these missions. These are end of game missions. I will talk to them, uh, talk about them later when we're talking, and then the Third way is through the battlegrounds, which I will also explain in detail later. So that's the three ways to get victory points. So, what does a turn look like? Let's start with Mr. Spanchon, he was player number one after all. And you get two actions during every turn. You get to recruit and you get to scheme. Uh, we'll get to the scheming second, even though you can always pick the order. 
uh, normally. But in this case, I'm just going to pick recruiting first. Recruiting is actually mandatory. Scheming is not. You can not scheme if you want to, but you have to recruit. So recruiting is done from the queue of mortals over here on the main board. And as you can see, in the leftmost one, there's three gems, and then the, the one next to that is one gem. That means that if you want to recruit the leftmost mortal, it's three power. And if you want to recruit the mortal next to that, it's one power. Um, we could, right? We have three power, so we could totally do it. But then we wouldn't have any power anymore, uh, and that would be bad. So we probably don't want to at this point. So um, I'm just going to recruit one of these. I'm going to recruit the Viking Queen over here, who's in the middle, doesn't cost any money, and she looks pretty badass. So recruiting a mortal means that uh, they come into your bloodline. So every vampire can have three childs or three people below them. And uh, Mr. Svanchon is my only vampire, so she has to be the sire. So I have to put a blow down here right now. There's no other option. After you do this, you move the queue up and you flip up a new human that is now also in the queue that can be recruited. So, what does that mean? So the Viking Queen is now part of our bloodline and she immediately activates. That will do something to the battlegrounds. So let's take a look at what they do to the battlegrounds and while I do that I will also explain how the battlegrounds work. So Mr. Svanchon just recruited the Viking Queen and she will be activated. So if you look at the top left corner of the image, there's four symbols there. The top symbol is her type, wealth. That matters for the schemes, which is the second action you can do and I will discuss in the scheme bit. I'll ignore that for now. The three other symbols are the symbols that are about the battlegrounds. So I'm gonna start with the battleground right here, which is called the War of Princes. And this one cares about the direction where the newly recruited vampire is from. In the case of the Viking Queen, you can see the bottom symbol points up and is black, which means north, which means that she is from this court. So um, before I'll say what that does, the setup of this battleground is always the same. You have seven Ankhs, which is one of the symbols of Vampire the Masquerade, in the seven different courts. Every time a vampire gets activated, then you look at which court they're from, in this case of the, in the case of the Viking Queen, it's the North Court, and you can move one Ankh into a uh, connected square that does not have a Ankh of a different court in it. So in this case I could go here, here, or here. Those are the only three that are connected, right? Uh, how does this one score and how does this end up? So after you've played many more vampires, you've moved many more Ankhs at a certain point, uh, you uh, have something that looks a bit like uh, this maybe. And so at, this is then the end of the game, right? You've done several rounds, you've activated a lot of different vampires. And then you count how many territories every court is holding. Right now, the white court or the southern court is holding three and also the black court is also holding three, but there's a little sneaky thing in there. The middle court is worth double, so this one would be four areas, and now the black court would win. Which means that at the end of the game, uh, you look at every vampire that is of the black court, and they get two victory points. If it would be slightly different, and you would have a, a tie, now black has three and white has three, then both every vampire from the black court and from the white court, north and south, would be worth two victory points at the end of the game. There are some vampires that are wanderers. I will show you a little bit what happens with them in the next round. I'll try to recruit one uh, for Anatole. And um, at the end of the game, a wanderer is always worth one victory point. No matter which court one, it's always one victory point. But I'll, I'll show you how that one works. I'm going to put everything back because obviously we didn't uh, move this much uh, Ankh yet. Um, an Ankh can be moved anywhere except back into its home court or where another court is already present. So that's uh, the War of the Princess and that was the bottom one. Then I'm going to go to the left uh, top one and that is the of clans and high and low. So if you are red you are an elitist, if you're green you're an egalitarian and um, these two will uh, battle it out. So the setup of this board is basically you put one marker in the middle and it's that simple. The marker has two sides but it does not really matter which side you use. 
And in the case of the Viking Queen, she is red, which means you do one step in the direction of red. And I don't like to flip it to that color because you're in that color. Um, at the end of the game, wherever this marker ends up, that's how many points the vampires of that color are worth. So there's ones, there's two. So for example, if you end up here on two red, then every vampire with a red disposition gets two points at the end of the game. This is true for both you and your opponents. Same goes for the uh, War of the Princess. If North wins, it's not just your vampires that are Northern, no, also the vampires of your opponents. So you want to keep in mind which faction you are making win. This one has an extra rule, which is that if you ever reach the final space, uh, for example for red, then every vampire with the red disposition gets a power and then it moves back to zero. Same goes for, for green, but then it goes to the green vampires and it moves back to zero. So right now we've just done one step in the red direction and that's where it should be. Then we have the battleground, which is called the Beast Within. This is a, a slightly uh, longer setup than the other two. You, uh, for every clan that is there, you need a clan token. The clan tokens have two sides, a blue side and a yellow side. And you look at your clan leader, you look at the symbol that they have. If they are blue, you started out blue. If they are yellow, you start out yellow. So Mr. Svanchon, as you can see, is yellow. And Anatole, as you can see, is blue. So right now, Anatole, Malkavian, their clan symbol, blue. Mr. Svanchon, Tremere, their clan symbol is yellow. When you recruit uh, a vampire and you activate them, then the symbol that they have, if it matches with the current color of your, uh, of your token, you go up one. If it doesn't, you go down one. And you flip. So now you have a different color. In this case, she's yellow, so we go up one. This one scores for you specifically. You can't influence the other one's track. And as you can see, all the way up here, you can get six victory points. But if you manage to get all the way down here, you can get minus eight victory points. So this is a personal track you're on. So you're rewarded for picking uh, vampires that have the same disposition as you. But um, if you uh, um, recruit vampires that aren't, you will go back. But then that will now be your disposition. So then you can keep recruiting them. And there's an extra thing that happens when you go back. But I will explain that when I get to uh, Anatole. So in Anatole's turn, we'll get back to the battlegrounds. I'll do all three of them again. I'll recruit again. But first, let's finish Mr. Spanchon's turn. She had two options. Remember, recruiting, which was mandatory. And then there's the schemes, which are optional. And the order doesn't matter. We could have done a scheme first, but for this video, we've decided to recruit first. So Mr. Spanchon uh, can do a scheme now. And there's uh, two types of schemes. There's the public schemes that are next to the battlegrounds. And then there's the private schemes that are in her hand that are only an option to her. If you do one of the public schemes, they just stay and the next player can do them again and then again. But if you do one of the schemes in your hand, you discard it and it's done. Uh, there are ways to draw more schemes and then you can draw more. So if you take a look at, for example, the scheme that is for the, uh, uh, the beast within Battleground, you see it has symbols on top, which is a feather symbol, which is for scholarly types, a money symbol, which is for wealthy types. Um, if I want to do this scheme, I need to have both of those in my Koteri. So, um, I'll explain a bit what the Koteri is, but you can clearly see that Mr. Svanchon, she is a clandestine type, has a mask, and the Viking Queen has uh, uh, money. She's a wealthy type, so I don't have a feather in my bloodline at all. If I really, really want to do it anyway, I can use one of my clan boon tokens on any of my vampires, even if it's not mine, as long as it's a clan boon token, and place it on any vampire that's not in torpor of one of my opponents to use their symbol for this scheme. Well, I could, Anatoly actually has the feather that I was missing, so I could give Anatoly my clan boon, and then I could do this scheme. Um, right now, I don't think I want to. I think I want to do one of the schemes in my hand. So I'm gonna take a look at the schemes in my hand and you see all three of them. It's uh, purification rites, scry and expel. And what you will notice immediately is that uh, like scry has all four of them uh, mentioned there, which means that it doesn't matter. As long as you have one of those types, you're good. 
So right now, what I could do, uh, scry looks good to me, it gives me more options. There's two things I can do, it's either draw two clan schemes, so that's drawing two new cards from the pile, right? Or I can reserve a vampire. Reserving a vampire means using your clan token, placing it on that vampire, um, whichever it is. I could do, like, I want this criminal, love criminals and then nobody can recruit them. It can still be removed from the queue, there's still other actions that have been taken with it, but it cannot go into any of my opponent's bloodlines. Um, so I, I think I wanna do that. So I have to pick which is the leader of this scheme. I could make that Mr. Spanchon. Uh, a scheme is always done by the leader and all their childs, but the leader gets exhausted and cannot do another scheme unless you somehow get rid of the exhaustion, which is possible with other cards. Um, but I really don't want to exhaust my mistress, I think, so instead I could just use the Viking Queen. It was any symbol, remember? And Well, she has a symbol. She doesn't have any child, but I only need one symbol. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to use this Scry, um, and I would like to have more options. I, I really don't know where the game is going yet, so reserving a specific vampire doesn't seem like a thing I want to do. So I'm going to draw two new cards, and now I have four schemes in my hand instead of the th three I had. And now I've done and the recruit and the scheme, and I'm done with Mr. Spanchon for the first round. So then we move to Anatole, and I'm gonna do a recruitment for uh, for him, and I'm also gonna do a scheme. And so the queue is still there, and I promised to try to uh, uh, find a wanderer, and uh, the regent is a wanderer. Um, so I'm gonna recruit the regent. Uh, again, it's in an area that doesn't cost any power, which makes me happy because I don't really want to pay power because those are victory points, and Anatoly has, is the only vampire, so I have to place it below them. These move on to the next square, and a new person appears, a general appears. So, um, I'm going to do the three battlegrounds again. I'll go through it a bit quicker this time because I think uh, we have a little bit more knowledge of what it is, so I'll start again here. And this one is a Wanderer. So as a Wanderer, she can move any of these Ankhs. Um, our opponent ha now has a Southern and a Northern Vampire, so we probably don't want to help those. Um, Anatole is Western, so I probably just want to move a Western Ankh somewhere. So I'm going to move this one here so that um, that would probably be the best move point-wise for us. After that, I'm going to go up to this one, and you can see that she has the Red Disposition as well, so Red moves up one more. That's quite easy. And then we go to the Beast Within, the one that I talked about. So remember that ours is right now blue because Anatola started with it on blue, but she is yellow, which is different. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna move one back because it's different and we're gonna flip it. Now, we do have a yellow position. If we recruit a yellow one, we would go up. If we now recruit a blue one, down again. Whenever this one goes down, there's a little perk because you don't want to go down because that's minus victory points, but whenever it goes down, you get to draw another scheme. So now we have four schemes, so that's nice, right? Mr. Svanchon had to actually use a scheme to get two new schemes. We just got it for free, but at a cost of some victory points. So um, there's a little bit of balance in that. So then um, we can do schemes. Um, I'm not gonna look at the hand of Anatoly because I've already decided that actually this battleground of the War of the Princess interests me quite a lot and I want um, the Western vampires to totally win. So I wanna do this public scheme of palace intrigue. I need a clandestine vampire and a wealthy vampire. So the regent, wealthy, great. Oh, I don't have a clandestine though, so that's sort of bad. But like I said, clan boons can be used to solve that. And I happen to know that Mr. Svanchon is a clandestine vampire. So I'm just going to give her a clan boon. And with that, I am going to activate the palace intrigue. I choose Anatole to be my uh, Cote de leader. So uh, he will get exhausted and can't be used again. And that means that he and all his childs are part of the Cote de for this uh, for this scheme. And this scheme says, first you gain one infamy. And I'm gonna put it here and I'll explain a little bit why that is. And this one says activate each Corteri member on this battleground. So we're gonna do for this battleground, all of the Corteri members, which is only two, if there would be more childs, then it would be all of them as well. Uh, we will activate two. So right now, uh, Anatole is a Western vampire, so I can activate this one here again. 
and uh, the regent is a wonder, so I can activate any, and I probably want to activate another one of the western ones. So now west is like doing really well on this battleground. So I've done a recruit, I've done a scheme, that means that the round, uh, uh, the turn of Anatoly is over, and with that the round is also over because we only had two players. The round marker goes over here to number to place number two. As you can see, if you have a two-player game, there's ten rounds total. A three-player game has nine rounds. A four-player game has eight rounds. Um, there's another way to because you have to recruit. You can also count the vampires that you've played to see uh, which round you're in. But there's a nice marker over here, so let's use it. Um, and that was one round as an example. Next, what I'm going to talk about a little bit is the uh, text on the schemes and what they do, and also why I moved this infamy one down. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what schemes can do. I put an example hand together here for Anatoly. This was not the actual cards he had in that game, but uh, there's some of the uh, words on here that I wanted to show you guys. So the first one, uh, Lingering Grievances. Uh, says something about torpor and torpor is uh, indicated with this marker over here which is the other side of the exhaust and a vampire in torpor uh, doesn't count in any way shape or form doesn't do anything can't be part of coteries is staked in the heart uh, that's the flavor behind it and they're completely useless in the vampire the masquerade game stake in heart doesn't kill a vampire it just incapacitates them and they're just lying around like an old corpse doing nothing. Um, so uh, some of the cards will inflict torpor, some of the cards will do something depending on torpor. Many of the cards will have the yellow gem symbol and the red gem symbol which is infamy uh, and power. Some of them will take it away, redistribute it, give it, etc. Um, here's a reserve card. We already saw that one actually in the gameplay with uh, Mr. Svanchon. So that's putting a marker on a person in the queue. Uh, you can also remove people from the queue. This Inside Madness does remove three characters from the queue. So then you have a bit of control on what is in the queue. And every clan has a special, which is a, they, they always uh, boldly print it. In the case of the Malkavians, Embrace the Chaos. I'm not going to explain what that does here. There's a separate video for every clan, what their special does. And then there's Activate. Activate means that you do the battlegrounds for that recruit. Um, in a chronicle game there can be text down here and when you activate a vampire that happens when you recruit or the text activate is on a scheme you have to do those in order as well. Uh, in this game it can never happen because a uh, vampire needs to be elevated and that's a thing that doesn't happen in the basic game. So after that we also have rejuvenate and rejuvenate gets rid of torpor and or exhaust for uh, the vampire that you pick to have it be on. You can also unexhaust, which only gets rid of exhaust. And that is the basic terms that they can use in the cards and what they do. Then I still promised you to tell you why this infamy went down one, right? Well, there's a special rule for your clan leader. Your clan leader can never be in torpor and can never get infamy. So. When your clan leader would get infamy, you get to place it down your bloodline. For Torpor, there's a special rule that it has to go down the bloodline as well, but you can always sacrifice a child. So if the regent would have a child as well, and Anatoly would be like, no, Torpor is not for me, not even a choice, right? Clan leader can never be in Torpor. The regent now, or you, have the choice to push it back down towards the criminal. So after we finished those schemes and we finished recruiting uh, 10 times for a two-player game, we uh, count all our points from the battlegrounds, we count all our points from our power and infamy, not counting vampires and torpor, right? And then there's la one last thing that can give a little kick to your team, which is these basic missions. They have a symbol on them and whichever bloodline has the most vampires that contain that symbol will get these uh, Rewards and the rewards quite simple. It's always three power for your clan leader. So that's basically three victory points, right? And then the game is over and one person has won. So those are the elements of the game. 
Uh, obviously, this is going to be a big, big bloodline. Remember, three vampires below every other vampire, but you can you could make a single branch if that's what you want, but your criteria will be very small because your criteria will always be the leader and all their childs. Um, but that could be good, like for Scry, it was great. In the end, uh, the battlegrounds will be much fought over, and depending on what they do, your vampires and your bloodlines will have certain value, including their power, the, the clan boons, and whatnot. So I hope this has been enlightening, and I hope you have a lot of fun playing the game. Uh, don't forget that I have different videos in the description down below for the other aspects of the game. And thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.